What if one of the most powerful events in human history wasn't just a myth, but a real catastrophe deeply etched into our collective memory? Hello, and welcome to Sleepy Time History. Tonight, we journey back 11,600 years to the dramatic and turbulent end of the last ice age. Picture a world vastly different from our own. Enormous ice sheets, miles thick, covered much of North America and Eurasia. Sea levels were hundreds of feet lower, connecting lands that are now separated by vast oceans. Britain was a peninsula of Europe, and you could walk from Siberia to Alaska. This was the world of our Stone Age ancestors, a world on the brink of a cataclysmic transformation. For thousands of years, the climate had been slowly warming. But around 11,600 years ago, something snapped. The warming accelerated dramatically, triggering a period of unprecedented environmental chaos known as the Younger Dryas Impact Event. Gigantic ice dams, which had held back immense glacial lakes, suddenly burst. Trillions of tons of meltwater were unleashed in colossal, world-altering floods. These weren't gentle rises in water levels, they were walls of water, hundreds of feet high, scouring landscapes and carving new canyons in a matter of days. This wasn't a single, isolated event, but a global phenomenon. As the vast ice sheets over North America and Scandinavia collapsed, they dumped unimaginable volumes of fresh water into the oceans. This caused a rapid, staggering rise in sea levels perhaps as much as 10 feet in a single century, with sudden pulses that could have raised the water level by feet in just a few years. For the hunter-gatherer populations living along the coastlines of the ancient world, this was an apocalypse. Imagine your home, your hunting grounds, the land your people have known for generations, simply vanishing beneath the waves. One day, the ocean is a familiar distance away. The next, it's at your doorstep. Entire coastal plains, fertile and rich with life, were submerged. The Persian Gulf, as we know it today, didn't exist. It was a river valley. The North Sea was a low-lying plain roamed by mammoths. The archipelagos of Southeast Asia were part of a vast subcontinent called Sundaland. All of this was drowned. Humanity was displaced on a scale we can barely comprehend. Communities were scattered, forced to flee inland to higher ground, leaving behind everything they had ever known. Familiar territories disappeared, and ancient migration routes were cut off forever. It was a global refugee crisis, played out at the dawn of civilization. Humanity was forced to adapt, to find new ways to survive, or face extinction. The world had been irrevocably broken, and a new one was just beginning. And here's where things get really fascinating. This immense, traumatic event didn't just disappear from history. It appears to have been remembered, passed down from generation to generation, not as scientific data, but as myth. Flood stories are found in nearly every culture on Earth, from the Americas to Australia, from India to Mesopotamia. We all know the story of Noah's Ark from the Bible, where God floods the Earth to wash away wickedness. But long before that was written, the Sumerians and Babylonians told the story of Zeusudra and Atnapishtim, who built great boats to survive a world-destroying deluge sent by angry gods. In ancient Greece, the myth of Deucalion and Pyrrha tells of a great flood from which they alone survive to repopulate the earth. Hindu scriptures describe Manu, who is warned of a coming flood by a fish and builds a large boat to save his family and the seeds of life. The Anishinaabe people of North America have stories of a great flood that cleansed the world leaving only a few survivors on a log or raft. The aboriginal peoples of Australia tell of floods that transformed their landscapes. The similarities are uncanny, a divine warning, a world-ending flood, a chosen few who survive in a boat, and the eventual rebirth of humanity on a cleansed earth. For centuries, these stories were dismissed as mere fables or allegories. But what if they aren't? What if they are the fragmented, mythologized memories of a real, global trauma? the shared memory of a time when the waters rose and the world of our ancestors was drowned. The timelines match up almost perfectly. The end of the Younger Dryas period, with its catastrophic meltwater pulses and rapid sea level rise, occurred right around 9600 BC, or 11,600 years ago. This is precisely the time frame that many geologists and archaeologists now point to as the source of these widespread flood legends. The scientific evidence is compelling. Geologists have mapped the paths of titanic ancient floods like the Missoula floods in North America, which were so powerful they carved out the channeled scablands of Washington state. Marine archaeologists are discovering submerged landscapes and even signs of human habitation on the continental shelves deep beneath the waves. In the Black Sea, researchers have found evidence of a sudden, catastrophic flood around 7,500 years ago, when rising Mediterranean waters breached the Bosporus Strait and inundated a freshwater lake, possibly displacing early agricultural communities along its shores. Of course, samples from ice sheets and deep-sea sediment provide a detailed climate record, 
showing abrupt violent shifts that correspond with this period of global upheaval. The evidence points not to a single flood that covered the entire globe at once, but to a prolonged period of catastrophic coastal flooding and environmental change that affected every human population living near the water. For the people who lived through it, it would have certainly felt like the entire world was ending. So, how did this catastrophe shape the future of humanity? It may have been the single greatest catalyst for the invention of civilization itself. Think about it. The most resource-rich lands the coastal plains were gone. Populations were forced into smaller, more concentrated areas on higher ground. The old hunter-gatherer lifestyle, which required vast territories, became unsustainable for many. This pressure cooker of displacement and resource scarcity may have been the spark that ignited the Neolithic Revolution. Instead of just hunting and gathering, people began to manage their resources more intensively. They started cultivating plants and domesticating animals. They needed to create a stable food supply in a smaller area. This led to agriculture. With agriculture came settlement. People stopped wandering and began building permanent villages, which grew into towns and eventually cities. They needed to organize, to manage irrigation, to store surplus food, and to defend their new territories. This required new forms of social structure, governance, and technology. The trauma of the flood forced humanity to innovate on an unprecedented scale. The survivors of the deluge were starting over. They carried with them the memories of the drowned world, but they also carried the seeds of a new one. It is no coincidence that the first signs of large-scale agriculture and monumental construction appear in the archaeological record shortly after this period of climatic chaos. Sites like Gebekli Tepe in modern-day Turkey, a vast temple complex built by hunter-gatherers around 11,600 years ago, hinted a massive social and religious reorganization happening at exactly this time. Was it a response to this global catastrophe? A way to bring communities together and appeal to the gods who had seemingly tried to destroy them? The story of this great flood is not just a story of destruction, it's a story of resilience, adaptation, and rebirth. It is a testament to the incredible ability of our species to survive the unimaginable, and to rebuild from the ashes or, in this case, from the mud. It shows that our civilization isn't built on a foundation of steady, gradual progress, but was born from catastrophe. This ancient event serves as a haunting reminder and a powerful lesson for us today. We are currently facing our own period of rapid climate change and rising sea levels. The story of our ancestors, who watched their world disappear beneath the waves 11,600 years ago, is a sobering echo from the deep past. It tells us that our planet can and has changed in violent, unpredictable ways. But it also offers a glimmer of hope. It tells us that humanity has faced planetary upheaval before, and we have endured. We survived, we adapted, and we built a new world. The question is, as the waters rise once more, can we do it again? Thank you for joining me on this journey into our planet's deep and dramatic past. I hope this story has given you something to ponder as you drift off to sleep. If you enjoyed this episode, please consider liking, sharing, and subscribing for more explorations of our forgotten history. Until next time, sleep well.